In light of some of the new features in FreeCAD, I thought I would revisit an old favorite. Some time ago, I did an open reply to Tom Sandlatterer about the use of FreeCAD to design a seed cup. Using the new features of FreeCAD, I can do it even quicker and more simply. I want to emphasize that this video is not an open reply to Tom, since it would be really unfair to invoke a version from the future. This is just a fun little exercise. I'll start in the part workbench and create a new sketch on the XZ plane. I want to start off creating some construction geometry. I'll draw the basic profile of the cup shape. Now I'll switch back to Real Geometry. Select the Construction Geometry and click Offset. It's very important here to check the box to constrain the geometry. Set an offset of 1 mm. This is almost what we want, but the rounded edge at the origin is just not going to work. It protrudes onto the other side of the origin and will mess up the revolve. Drop a straight line down to keep the wire closed and delete the arc. Now close the sketch. Select the sketch and revolve. That looks pretty decent, but I'd like the lip to rise a little bit less sharply. So go back into the sketch and just move the construction geometry around a little bit. Close the sketch again. That looks more like it. But I don't need the whole cup here. I just want half of it so I can make it interlocking with a clone of itself. So select the revolve and change the angle to 180 degrees. Seeing it now in cross section, I see I forgot to make it a solid. Select the revolve again and set solid to true. Now for some reason we've gone into error. Looking at the messages, we've got wire is not closed. Well since the offset tool always produces a closed wire, and it's not closed now, this has to be where we altered it to remove the arc. So open the sketch again. The best guess is I missed the coincident constraints when I added the vertical line. So I'll zoom in a little closer. Use the area select to get both endpoints and constrain coincident. Do that for the top and bottom and then close the sketch. Indeed, that was the problem. The revolve tool is now satisfied. Now switch to a front view and select one of the faces along the profile. It looks like it's all one face, but it's actually two faces because it came from a revolve. I'll set the selection filter to faces to make sure we get the face and not an edge. Create a binder on the face. I'll hide the revolve for a moment just to verify that we've selected half of the profile as we wanted. Now I'll select the binder and set an offset of minus one half millimeter. But when I click on binder, nothing happens. This is one of the things to watch out for. The reason is that I still have the selection filter set to faces and the binder is not a face. It looks like I've been able to select it over in the model view, but in fact it's not really selected. Perhaps by the time of release this will have been made a little bit more clear in the interface, or perhaps selecting something in the model tree will not be subject to the selection filter. Time will tell. So clear the selection filter. Again, I'll select the binder and set the offset to minus 0.5 millimeters. Much better. Now with the binder selected, create a mirror over the YZ plane. The objective is to allow the two halves of the cup to interlock with a tab and slot. Open up the mirror and extrude the binder by 1 millimeter. This will form the tab. Now extrude the mirror by one millimeter. Because of the mirroring, the extrude goes in the other direction, which is exactly what we want. Now select the revolve, then the extruded mirror, and cut forming a sod. 
Now select the cut and the extruded binder and fuse, adding the tab to the cup. Now clone the fusion. I'll get rid of the draft plane and switch to a top view. Right click the clone and click translate. Rotate the clone 180 degrees and pull it a little bit away from the fusion. As you can see, we now have two interlocking halves of a cup. So the question is, is this better or just different? It does produce a nicer lip for the cup and provides the opportunity to control it exactly. I left it rounded here, but it would be easy enough to make it vertical. Just open the sketch, delete the arc, and replace it with a line. Set the line vertical. For some reason, this has reversed the direction of the extrudes from the binder. Easily enough solved by setting reverse to true in the data pane. We can also give the cup a more distinct lip. Open the sketcher again. Delete the vertical line. I'll create an arc in three points to close the wire. Draw it out a bit. Now make the top tangent with the rest of the cup, but leave the bottom just coincident. I'll make the endpoints of the arc symmetrical with the end of the construction geometry to keep the offset parametrically tied to the construction. Close the sketch and there we have it. Since I used a binder to create the tab and slot, those conform to the new design parametrically. In the final analysis, this method really isn't particularly simpler than creating a shell and an offset, though it may mesh better with many users' way of thinking but it is certainly more versatile in the amount of control it offers over the final shape, making it very worthwhile. Thank you for watching. If you liked this video or found it useful, please like, subscribe, and share. If there's anything you'd like to see covered here, please let me know in the comments below.